Hallelujah. <laughs> good morning to you. Good morning to you. We say welcome and good morning to our National Church of God by Faith prayer call. Ten days of national prayer for our 99th General Assembly, Atlanta, Georgia, uh, starting kicking off Thursday this week, December 19th through the 22nd. The beauty of holiness. The beauty of holiness. Listen, holiness, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. It is beautiful. It is wondrous. It's splendorous. It's even sexy. Hallelujah. The beauty of holiness. And as First John tells us, every man that has this hope in himself purifies himself even as he is pure. So we thank God for these 10 days of prayer. I'm your host, Minister Cornelius Dunmore Stark, Church of God by Faith, Kingsville District, under the leadership of Presiding Bishop James McKnight, Jr. Uh, we thank God for our district elder and father in the person of Elder Dwayne Ganey, Gainesville District, and we thank God for every district. Listen, every assembly, local, district, national, every leader, everyone, from the pulpit to the parking lot, regardless of title or no title, we thank God for everyone on this call, and not just that, but even those not in by faith, even those that are friends, uh, those in the body of Christ, those in the kingdom of God at large, joining us, praying and covering uh, these proceedings in prayer. We thank God for you. Now, I'm, I'm elated, I'm, I'm relieved and glad this morning we're joined by a dynamic prayer leader, and that is uh, none other than Minister Ernestine Johnson. And the national prayer team has asked that on this eighth day of our ten days of national prayer, that we pray for the health, the safety, the emotional, the fi and the financial well-being of our seniors. I'm going to say that again, that we would pray for the health and the safety, the emotional and the financial well-being of our seniors. Listen, there's a lie going on out there. There's a lie that Satan is telling, and it's, and it's contrary to the word of the Lord. But there's a lie out there that some of our believers, some that have worked in the work of God, those that have pioneered and have gone forward in ministry, that have sacrificed for the glory of God, there's a lie that uh, God, you're too old now. You're too old for God to use you. You're too old to go forward and to, and to actually affect change in the community and in the world, that your best days are behind you, and that now it's time that there's, that there's no longer anything else for you to do. But the devil is a liar because Psalms 37 tells us, I was young and now I am old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. I've never seen, don't miss that, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Uh, Joshua chapter number 10, I'm sorry, Joshua, pardon me, chapter 14, but verse 10 uh, is where Caleb, this warrior, of God, one of the original, one of the OG spies that went in and spied out the land. He was in his 80s. He was 85 years old. You've got to listen to his testimony. He says, now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said to Moses, while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, I'm reading NIV, here I am today, 85 years old. Look at what he said in verse 11. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Caleb was saying he was still dangerous. Let Satan rear his ugly head. Let somebody need to be prayed for. Let somebody's son or niece or nephew, let me hear that they're unsaved, and we need to pray that they be delivered, and we need to declare the word of God to them. Let Satan show, have the audacity to show his ugly head, and I'll cut it off. Let a giant stick his neck out, and I'll cut it off. 
That's what Caleb was saying. And I decree and declare that is what, hallelujah, the spirit and the mindset that we're praying over our seniors as we lift them up and cover their spiritual, financial, and their emotional well-being. And so with that, let's receive now the one and the only. I um, thank God for you, uh, Minister Ernestine Johnson, and let's join her and raise our voices. Good morning. I am Minister Jones. I bring greetings from Sear Street, Love and Action Ministries in the South Georgia District under the leadership of Elder H.N. Turner and Assistant Pastor Terrence Walker. I am coming to with the assignment of praying for our elders, asking God to enable them to stand in this hour, to walk in the power of that that God has set them forth to walk in. We are to pray for their health. We are to pray for their safety and the emotional and financial well-being that they will go over what the enemy has set before them and do that that God has said. Right now, we just thank the Lord for his awakening power. He woke us up this morning, and he allowed us the privilege of entering into the, in his presence. I ask that every sin, every form of disobedience be forgiven us that we may enter with praise and thanksgiving. Father, we pray you for you to have mercy that's new every morning upon each and every one of us, for your great grace that is extended unto us, and for your exceeding great and precious promises that are given us, whereby we may live and prosper in life. I praise you for your word that enlightens us, for it is your spirit that enables us with power and authority to present these petitions in faith. Therefore, I commit my spirit, my mind, my will, my understanding under the authority and power of the name of Jesus, expecting these petitions to be granted. Father, I praise you, for you are my help, the source of my strength. You're the keeper of my life, the upholder of my life. For I declare according to the scriptures that in him I live, in him I move, and in him I have my being. Only in him is fullness of joy and righteousness evermore. This morning I praise you as the most high God. Hallelujah. We just come and we're just asking you, Father, to deliver from every affliction, weakness, pain, sickness, oppression, or depression that comes to attack those that are maybe well advanced in age. They have maybe passed their day of youth and have entered the evening of their lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the same God that delivered Jesus from the dead will quicken these temporal human bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in us. I pray that those advanced in age who may be susceptible to physical weaknesses may walk in the supernatural strength of God, knowing that that spirit that rest in, G in Jesus, rest in them also, and that they don't have to shrink back, but they can go forward and do that that God has set forth. And as the man of God has announced, we can pray, we can lift up the hands of those that are running the race um, uh, as foot soldiers. According to the psalmist in chapter 37, 23 through 25, we are promised that God would never forsake us. He would order our steps. And even if we fall, we will not utterly be cast down because he, the almighty God, will uphold us with his hand. I just call on the name of the Lord. I call unto him and, and make my appeal to heaven that every senior experience divine protection from every wicked device from every diabolical plan of the enemy. And help us to know that because you are our strong tower, our refuge, and our fortress. We can find safety in you and not have to fear because fear is torment. Therefore, dress us, even in our advanced years, dress us with uh, that protective armor that we may war on. I pray that we walk in your steadfast da daily love. Father, in confidence that every need is met according to your exceeding precious promises and that we rest in quietness and confidence and that we be a knowing people, that we know that 
Jesus has promised, and as Jesus has promised, he will watch over his word to bring it to pass. We're under his watch for I. And according to, the, to number 6, 22 from 27, we, the singers, can ask the Lord to let us walk in his blessings, knowing that he has promised that he will bless us and that he will keep us and that he will cause his face to shine upon us as we journey on. And the gracious Lord will be gracious unto us and will turn his face toward us so that we will walk in the glory of God and show him forward his loving kindness. But continue, therefore, forward, marching, expressing God's goodness in every place or in every situation that we find ourselves in. Lord, cause the emotional well-being of these people to be stable, quiet, and content, always ready in prayer and encouraging words to aid the boots on the ground, to keep the pace and remain strong as they proceed forward. Let us stand back as those witnesses, O oh God, that have witnessed the goodness of the Lord and have seen the power of God work in the earth. Let us continue to encourage those that are running the race, maybe a little quicker than we may, but Father, let us encourage them to run on because there is reward for their running. Let the mind of Christ rule in their lives, giving us the advantage over the enemy. Father, that rule that God has in us, he is our wisdom. He is our strategy. He is the one that shows us how to go forth. He is the one that shows us how to get the victory. He teach our hands to war. He teach our fingers to fight. And in every age, oh God, you will show us how to fight. You will show us how to stand and be those people that will make a difference to God. Now, Father, I ask that the enemy of poverty be cast down and his assignment be canceled so that he will not cast a shadow of doubt over any senior life, oh God, causing them to experience financial stability, cause us to walk in with every need met as you have as you have promised, cause us to communicate the wealth as good stewards, cause us to be a life, live a life that is word free as we trust in God as we walk in the ability that God has set before us. Let us walk it, dear God, knowing that our well-being is in his hands. Let us cast forth every care, knowing that he cares for us. I pray these things in Jesus' holy and matchless name. And I believe, dear God, that you would give us that that we pray. And, Father, we just pray, dear God, that not only our finances be blessed, but our emotional well-being. Let us not be depressed in any manner. Let us not be oppressed by the enemy in any manner. You said that you would be with us. You said that you would never leave us and you would never forsake us. Even to our old days, you say we shall bring forth fruit. And Father, we're believing that, dear God. We're believing that even in our winter age, we can experience summer harvest. Father, we believe that we can go forth and continue to accumulate those things that you said accumulate. We can walk with our heads lifted up. We can walk, oh God, with our minds stayed on you and believing that no matter what, we can have what we say. And Father, I believe, dear God, that your word is right. And I believe that as we go forth, you will show us how to how to war. Oh, God, we can go in our war room, and we can do mighty battle in the war room. Oh, God, if we're not able to go out like we once have, we can stand back and be the errands and the herbs. We can lift up those arms of those that are fighting and continue to go on. We can set at liberty those that are captive in our prayer lives. And, Father, we just thank you. Let not the enemy ever think that he has the advantage because in Christ Jesus we are the advantage we have more than enough to do what we need to do and Father we say thank you we thank you Father for your loving kindness for your tender mercies we thank you that today we are strong we thank you that today we can do as Caleb said we can go in and out and we can make war and we can accomplish those grounds that you have set before us there is no territory whereby the, whereby the seniors have to stand back and feel like they are defeated. We are an undefeated people because our foe has already been defeated. We're resting in that place of, of victory in Christ Jesus, and we are doing the work of Christ even in that place. We are operating from a place of victory. We have seen the Lord do mighty warfare on our, on our behalf, and we can yet go forth and do those things that God has said. Father, we just honor you and we praise you for the advantage you give us 
as your seniors, dear God. Those that have seen the righteous go out and in. Those of us that have witnessed your goodness, even when it looks like it's a bad situation. Those of us that have witnessed water in the deserts, dear God. Those of us that have witnessed oases where there has been no other means. You have made the way so many times. So, Father, we just thank you that we can go out and we can encourage our young people to continue on because God will uphold you. He would uphold you with his precious right hand. And, Father, I just so thank you. I thank you that today we can go out. Today we can do mighty warfare. Today we can accomplish. Today we can continue to be those people that are a threat to the enemy. And, Father, we say thank you. And as we go into the assembly, oh, God, oh, God, let us go into the assembly believing that we have purpose believing that we can do those things that we have come to do, oh God, that we can declare the beauty of holiness. Even in our young age, you said that our gray hair is an honor to you. Our gray hair is our splendor. Oh God, let us go shine our gray hair and let God have his way in us. Oh God, let us go forth and believe that nothing is impossible to them that believe. And Father, we just love you and we honor you for this time. We pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The answer to the promises of God is yes and amen. Amen, and so it is. So be it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's our confidence this morning. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is not a man that he should lie. His words are true and right. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank God this morning, woman of God, hallelujah, so many thousands of, of apologies to you, Minister Jones. God bless you. I thank God for you, woman of God. I, listen, glory to God, hallelujah, Jesus. We thank God for Minister Ernestine Jones. You know something? The woman of God prophesied. The woman of God declared boldly and confidently, hallelujah, Jesus. I heard a, a JL spirit rising up out of her. Maybe JL is not, uh, she's found in Judges chapter 4. Maybe you haven't bookmarked that. That might not be in your favorites in your, uh, in your version Bible app. But if you go read about that woman of God, you'll find that she killed an evil, wicked king named Sisera. But the woman the woman honored God, and the, you couldn't deceive her. She was a woman that could not be fooled. Hallelujah, glory to God. She couldn't be tricked. She couldn't be bamboozled. She couldn't be deceived because she knew who God was, and she knew who God's enemies were. And there are women of by faith that have that spirit that are rising up. Hallelujah, even the more right now. Glory to God. And so minister Ernestine Jones, I thank God for you, woman of God. Uh, glory to God. You've got to read that passage. Hallelujah. He said J.L. was going to be blessed above women, just like he's talking about Mary. Blessed art thou, highly favored, above other women. But he said that that woman, too, was blessed above other women. Hallelujah. There's a J.L. spirit on the rise. Thank you, Minister Ernestine Jones. God bless you. God bless you, Minister Ernestine Jones. Listen, she declared that that Caleb spirit, hallelujah, glory to God, that Caleb anointing is present and available to whosoever will. I thank God, hallelujah, for warriors in this church, patriarchs and matriarchs that believe and understand what Caleb said in Joshua chapter 14, verse 11, when he said there, New Living Translation this time, he said, I am as strong now as I was when Moses sent me on that journey, and I can still 
travel and fight as well as I could then, not just physically, not just um, emotionally, but even in finances. Even maybe there were decisions that were made, glory to God. Maybe there were financial missteps that were made. But we see God even now repairing the years that the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm has eaten. We see God even now bringing back those years, bringing you to a place of being get free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We see it. Hallelujah. We see it. I heard it as the woman of God prophesied and declared it, and I see it manifesting before our eyes. Glory to God. Yes, you will still travel and fight. Away with this lie. Away with this nonsense and foolishness that you can't battle and you can't yet war. We've got women of God, Mother Dunmore, going off to the Philippines, flying for hours and hours, going around the world to the backside of the Asia, glory to God, going into the mountains, Elder Daily, going into South America and Chile, work being done in so many places outside of the United States. You can still travel and you can still fight. Listen, we give Jesus the glory. We give him all the honor. We give him all the praise. We thank God for the safety for the protection, for the financial, the emotional, the physical well-being of the senior saints of God, of our mature leaders, hallelujah, matriarchs and patriarchs in this church. And so we just say, it's so, yes and amen. So listen, we encourage you, join us tomorrow. We're almost there. We're wrapping this thing up. Join us tomorrow as we enter into our ninth day of 10 days of national prayer. Glory to God for our 99th General Assembly starting this Thursday, December 19th through the 22nd, the beauty of holiness. Join us there. It is going to be uh, historic, historic. People say epic, but it is going to be historic. Glory to God. And so we love you. Let's go forward today, make it a great day. In Jesus' name, we can say hallelujah and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Love you, dear. Love you, honey. Hallelujah. <laughs>